Hi, everybody. Trisha here from the Virtual Foundry. Excited to be talking with you today. Now, you've seen me talk about the different FFF metal options out there and how they compare. And if you've missed that, you can catch that here or look for the comparison chart link in the description of this video. And now that we know that you'll get the same final part from any of those FFF metal processes, let's really dig into those costs. It's an important consideration as you explore and adopt metal 3D printing. Now in this video, I'll give you a first part cost, meaning everything that you'll need to buy to make a part for the very first time. I'll also give you a second or subsequent part cost, and I'll give you all the caveats and conditions that go along with those numbers. Now, before we get to the numbers, you should know that shipping and energy costs are not included in anything that I give you today. And I'll be talking in US dollars here as well. If you live outside the US and buy from one of our partners or from a marketplace that's convenient for you, you may be paying different prices. And as we all know, prices change over time. Now, what we talk about today are the prices I found today. Now, they may not be the same as when you watch this video and look for yourself. Now, let's dig in. What can you expect to pay for your first FFF metal 3D print? The chart that I'm about to show you will give you the lowest cost entry point possible. It includes the hardware, the FFF 3D printer and kiln, and all the supplies and materials you'll need to make a full metal part. The equipment that I reference here is low cost, but not low quality. I'll be showing you baseline models that will still give you the great results that you expect. We're going to assume that your part is a 30 gram calibration rings model made from copper filament. Let's take a look at that chart. First, we have the 3D printer. Now we like the Creality brand around here and it provides the bones for the metal 3D printer that we have in our store. Converting these Creality printers to direct drive is even better. Now check out podcast volume two, episode one to learn more about what printers work with filament. You'll need a nozzle that's harder than brass and a little bit larger than usual. Go for the hardened steel 0.6 millimeter version. A podcast volume three, episode seven will give you a ton of information all about nozzles. Now the filler warmer is essential. It eases the path from spool to printer and will give you a smoother printing experience. Now, filament really sticks to that print bed, so it's important to put a release layer between it and your print. If you're using a glass print bed, watch the FAQ video, preparing a glass print bed for printing with filament. Otherwise, you'll use standard blue painter's tape. For the actual 3D printing material, we're using copper filament in this example and selecting the 100 gram sample portion. Now in real life, you would more likely buy the half or full kilogram unit. The crucible is used in the debinding and sintering process. You'll pack your print in sintering refractory ballast in the crucible and place it in the kiln for thermal debind. Then repack your print in sintering refractory ballast, add sintering carbon, and run the thermal sintering cycle in your kiln. Now for this example, we selected a stainless steel crucible here, and you'll need to replace that after several cycles. We do also offer alumina crucibles in our store that will last for many, many debinded sintering cycles. Now sintering refractory ballast, those items that I mentioned earlier, uh, AL203 is used to support the part shape during that debind process. And the sintering refractory ballast talc powder is used to support the part shape during sintering. That sintering carbon keeps oxygen from getting to your part during sintering. 
Now these part these powders are reusable and you'll see more about that in the FAQ video, can the sintering powders be reused? Kiln paper helps limit the amount of oxygen that your sintering carbon has to manage. You could also use a ceramic plate or tool, tool steel wrap or anything that can take the heat and won't create a seal with your crucible. Now your kiln has only two requirements. It should have a programmable controller and it needs to be able to hold the sintering temperature of the material you're working with for several hours. You can use a kiln you already have as long as it meets those two requirements. You can buy one from us or you can source a kiln from the kiln vendor of your choice. That's it. You've gone all in on a complete metal 3D printing system and made your first full metal part for less than $2,000. And you got the same result as those $200,000 FFF metal systems. So how about that second part? Well, you already have your printer in your kiln. You already have your fill -a warmer your crucible, your sintering powders. Really the only thing you need is more filament. Now in this example, we bought another 100 gram sample portion of copper filament for less than $30. Your all in second part cost, $20.59. Can you believe it? Beautiful full metal parts on regular equipment that you might already have. It's really revolutionary. But wait, what if you don't need a low cost solution? What if you have budget to spend and still want the benefits of full control, complete flexibility, and total part security for your metal 3D printing system? Well, we got you. We can build a system for you that meets any budget. We'll upgrade the hardware. We'll include more filament, materials, and supplies. We can include some finishing tools, whatever you need. Whatever your budget, we can build an FFF metal 3D printing system for you. $2,000, $10,000, $50,000 and up. So reach out with any questions to info at thevirtualfoundry.com and let's talk about getting you set up with your own full metal 3D printing system today. Thanks everyone, happy printing. The 30 gram cal universal calibration rings model made. Hold on. We're going to. That. For the actual. That's it.